Howdy doody, my name is Susie, and today I thought I would share with you this really, really fun craft project that you can make at home, and that is for felting soap. And felting soap is taking natural wool, wrapping it around a regular bar of soap, whatever you choose, and then felting it so that the felt conforms to the soap. And you can create these beautiful abstract variations in your soap, or you can use this opportunity to do some very detailed needle felting into your soap. And I've always been um, so interested in felting, and I certainly admire the use of wool as an art medium. And I've seen lots of YouTube channels where they create both structural 3D um, sculptures or toys, but I've also seen where they will use the felting in order to create a landscape or an abstract art or pillow art. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful craft to learn. And I've been wanting to learn this for a very long time, but it's a little bit intimidating. And when I saw this project on felting soaps, I thought this is the perfect opportunity for me to introduce myself to felting. So in order to felt your soaps, you're going to need natural wool. And I just bought this online. It actually came pre-shrunk in a very tiny um, bag. And I was a little disappointed because I thought, wow, this is going to cost me a lot of money to felt soap. But as you will see, you use very little. I'm sure I could felt 200 bars of soap with what I've got here alone. So you're going to need some natural wool. And if you want to get into the variations, what I did was I bought a big piece of plain color. And then I got this assortment of colors of natural wools in all, you can see all the different colors. And with this kit, actually, when I bought this online, it came with its own felting needles. So like I said, you have to use natural wool because in order to felt wool, we're gonna be shrinking it. So if you've ever taken a real wool sweater and accidentally threw it in your wash with hot water and then dried it, and it turns out it went from an adult sweater to a child sweater, that is felting. You've basically shrunk the wool. So in order to felt wool, you need hot water, cold water, you need agitation, and you need soap. So we've got our bar of soap, and we have our wool, and then we're going to use our bowl for hot water, and we're going to agitate it by rubbing it, and that's what's gonna cause all the fibers to interlink and mix together. And when you're putting it in the hot and the cold water, those fibers are gonna to shrink together and they're gonna create a very, very nice felted surface, which is going to totally cover your bar. So it goes from, your wool is gonna be like this before felting, and it's going to be this firm around your soap, after it's been felted. Use wool. You can't use synthetic fibers because they don't shrink and it won't, won't work. So you have to use natural wool. And what I've got is roving. So this is natural wool fibers that have been combed in one direction. They're all going in one direction like this. Or you could buy the wool as batting and the fibers are cross hatched like this. So if you were to use batting, it would shrink faster because you've already got that cross hatch of fibers. But if you're using roving, because they're all going in one direction, we want to actually put the roving, we're going to lay it in opposite directions so that when it shrinks, we've got this really interlocking tight weave. And that's what you want, a really tight weave around your bar of soap. So in order to pull off a piece of roving or a piece of wool, if you're to pull it like this, you'll never tear it apart. But if you take smaller amounts and you are gentle, the least amount of pressure 
is what allows you to pull the wool apart. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to cut it so you don't have any sharp edges. And then you're going to take your wool and just gently hold it at the end. And then you're just going to gently tease it apart. So you're going to gently tease it apart and you're going to get these little tufts of the roving. And then you're just going to lay them down. So I'm just going to continue taking a whole bunch of little tufts. And I want to create a rectangle that is wide enough and long enough for me to wrap the bar of soap like a gift. I think that might be wide enough. Just pull off. Yeah, I think that's wide enough to be able to fold the edges over. And then I'm going to pull the tufts of fibers off and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm creating a crosshatch effect. And you're going to have to do a number of layers. Now you want to try and keep the layers consistent. And I'm just doing enough layers so that it becomes, so I've done three or four layers. It's going to depend on uh, you and how much you pull off, but you can see the square is large enough to cover my soap. Now, putting it against the light, I can see where there's some light coming through and I wanna make it solid. Not so my soap doesn't peek through. Four layers of that. Now I will, I've just got it on a little bit of uh, some bubble wrap so that I can lift it. Now I will tell you that I'm using the cream as my base because I wanna do some felting jobs. I wanna do some needle felting, but you can just take your soap and you're just gonna wrap it around. And I just do it gently fold it, you give it a wrap, fold it over like a present, and then you're gonna wrap it really tightly. I'm just doing a dry run because I want to be able to see that my, I can't see through, I can't see my soap through this. Now this is fine because my soap is the same color as my wool, but I've noticed that when you're using colored soap, sometimes you need to add a little bit more because you can actually sometimes see the color of the soap coming through and you don't want that. I mean, it doesn't make a big difference, but if you're trying to create this like a really beautiful piece of art, then just keep that in mind. You might want to add a little bit more of the wool if you're using colored soap. Now at this point, I should mention before I go on with the felting is that if you use a round soap or soap without any edges, it's much, much easier to felt, especially if this is your first time trying it. And that's what I did. I just went with the easiest soaps to felt until I got a hang of it. If you want to use square soaps, then it's recommended that, and I can see why, it's recommended that you slice off all of the sharp edges off of your soap. And you can do that very easily with your potato peeler. And that's what I've got here. I've got actually a whole bunch of shavings from some other soaps that I did. But all you wanna do is just take your potato peeler and just round off those edges, all the edges, because when it felts, it's a little bit tougher to get it to felt perfectly at a right angle as it is to felt around a circular um, shape. So don't forget about your potato peeler. If you're using square soaps, knock off all of those rough edges so you've got nice smooth edges. But like I said, I don't have to worry about that today because all my soaps are 
oval rounded there's no sharp edges so it makes it very easy Salting. but if you want to make it a little bit more interesting and you want to do something that's abstract like this then all I did was just take your favorite colors so this is how much you get in these little um I can't remember how much this might be an ounce. Anyways, you get these little pieces and you literally- To literally just remove just pieces like this. And from these little pieces, I just stretch it out and you just lay it on top to create all kinds of designs. Can you see how fine that is? I keep the design, I try to keep the design inside um, where the soap is going to be because you're going to fold over the edges. It's not going to make that much difference, but it really doesn't matter. Down your design, however you like it. And I'm just going to turn it over like this. And now I'm going to wrap my soap. You want to have your old stocking close by. So we're going to take our soap. Mm, and this is lavender soap. So I might do some little flour afterwards. And then you're just going to wrap your soap. Just tightly wrap your soap and don't worry about the, the lines. This is the abstract part. They're not going to stay exactly like that. Then you just want to take your stocking. So if you want to keep those colors together, just hold your soap in your stocking. I don't want to tie it off and grab the wool. Turn the stocking like this. And I'm just going to pull it through. And I'm just pulling it through so it's tight. So it's nice and tight. I'm going to leave that loop there because after I can just pull this off and take it off in case you want to reuse the stocking. So now I've got my wool in a dry spot and all I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a bowl of hot water, hot tap water. So now I've got some hot tap water and I'm going to take my soap in the stocking and I'm just going to submerge it in the water. I could have added a little bit more water. I should have filled it up a bit more. But you're going to submerge it and you're going to make sure that it's fully saturated. And you're going to get all that air bubbles out of the soap. It only takes just a few, a minute, maybe. And then I'm just going to squeeze as much of the water out as I can. You can see it's starting to foam because the soap is now penetrating the wool. I'm gonna put that off to the side. You're gonna need a little towel. I keep a towel handy. And now we're gonna rub the soap and we're just going to rub it like this gently for five minutes. So I'm timing it for five minutes. And you want to be as gentle as you would applying face cream to your face. So kind of that gentle motion. But you have to make sure you get all of the surfaces rubbed all the way around the soap. So if you're using a square or rectangular soap, the sharp edges... I think you can see that it would be a little bit more challenging. I mean, it's nothing, it's not that difficult, but I would definitely say if it's your first soap, start off with something that's easy, that's going to give you success the first time around and um, just develop your knowledge of what it feels like and how it handles. And you will tell, you'll be able to tell once it's felted after doing a couple of soaps, because you can just feel the wool tightening around the bar of soap. It starts off, it's fairly, 
let me show you. Maybe we can do an experiment. So you can see it's leaving an indentation. As you do this, you can feel it tightening. You're not gonna get as much cushion or as much of an indentation as you go along. Now this method I learned from, I can't remember, but I'll look for the YouTuber that did this because I actually watched um, a lot of videos on how to felt soap and Everybody did a fantastic job, but everybody had a different way of doing it. And this lady that I can't remember her name now, but I will find it out and link it. Um, actually, this was the fastest method. It was the easiest method. And it was the method that used up the least amount of soap. So this is what I tried and it worked. So this is why I'm sharing it with you. This is also, if you're doing like these abstract designs, this is a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic craft for children or even who, people who maybe do not have the same dexterity that they used to. Um, you know, people that can't normally do tiny work with their hands. This is a lot of fun um to do with all ages and members of the family so you might be wondering why felt soap in the first place well first of all it looks beautiful felted soaps actually will last three times longer than a regular bar of soap you use them so they're not gummy and sloppy they actually dry up very nicely and one of the properties of real wool is that they ha it has lanolin so it has the ability to wick moisture away which is why it's such um people use it to make garments because it actually does help to wick away moisture well it does that with the bar of soap as well so there's our five minutes what you're to do is you're just going to pull pull your knot out when you go to take your soap out just do it gently and you may find that the soap is pulling on the nylons and that's because it has started to felt through the nylons. So just pull away the nylons gently like this. Sometimes you can ease it away by just rubbing along the edge. And what you don't want is it pulling your decorations or you don't want it pulling your wool right away so you can see it has pulled some away but that's exactly how we want it so you can see it's actually started to felt you know it's not felted if you can pull it off of the soap so these little guys are still pulling away and you don't want that so now we're just going to continue rubbing it for 10 minutes without the nylon on and in 10 minutes, your hands should be almost dry of lather. The reason we don't have very much lather, it's going to depend on the soap that you're using and whether or not it lathers a lot, but it also depends on how much water you're using. And that's why some of the other methods where you do hot and cold back and forth creates a lot of lather. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to destroy the soap, but this is only 15 minutes from start to finish and I just think it's uh, just an easier way, a neater way to actually felt the soap. And you can see that it's almost dry. Really feel how nice and tight it is. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm holding it in my hands. And I'm going to dunk it in really cold water. And then I'm just going to squeeze as much of the water out as I possibly can. I don't want to start lathering it again. I just want to remove as much of that water as possible. So I'm just gonna dry my hands 
And then I'm gonna dry my soap, press it into my nice dry towel, and just squeeze out as much of the water as I can. Hello, hello. So I've squeezed out as much of the water as I can, and you can see that this is very tightly felted around the soap already. And we're gonna let it dry for 24 hours. In 24 hours, you will have something like this. You can see it's, you can't peel it off, you can't pull it off. It's very tightly woven itself around the soap. And now this is the time. So now I'm gonna show you how to do some uh, very, very simple needle felting. Remember, I only started doing this three days ago. This is my first soap and it's still not, uh, it's a little bit fluffy. I think I used too much batting. This was my practice bar. So this was the very first bar that I felted. You can see it's not 100% felted, but I was able to use it. Here's the Lily of the Valley to experiment with just different little designs. Here's the olive. Here's just practicing felting. But even if your soap turns out like this fluffy and it's not 100% felted, that's okay because every time you take it in the shower and you use it with hot water and it drying, it will continually felt on its own. You can look for templates, um, plastic templates that you can put on your soap and then needle point through the template if you don't want to do it free form. The other thing is that if you're using a soap that you're going to be felting and if you're short on inspiration, then you can maybe do some felting of soaps and whatever you felt on your soap will indicate the type of soap that it is. This is honey and oatmeal. So I did a B. This was violet. So I started off with a kind of just uh, abstract design and then added a couple of little violets. And of course, this is rose. Got the little tiny roses. The way that the felting needle works is that it has barbs going down. So when you're felting and you're pushing down, those barbs are grabbing all the little pieces of wool and pulling it into whatever it is that you're felting. Material. And as it pulls, it pushes the fibers in with those barbs and it pulls out smoothly because the barbs are going downwards smoothly. So this is the motion that you want to be using. So I'm just new at this, but you want to hold your needle straight upwards. You don't want to do it on an angle because you will risk breaking the needle. And you're just going to be needling those fibers into your felted base. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you wanted to use a stencil, and let's just use this as an example, you would place your stencil, and normally this would be plastic, you would take your little tuft of wool, position it over the stencil, and then you would start pushing in. And that's why they give you the finger guards to hold your work in place so that you don't accidentally prick your finger. I found those a little bit difficult to work with, but what I did find was this, just a little chopstick or a little uh, toothpick or whatever that I just happen to have. And these are just from the dollar store. And I found that if I held it in with the stick, it made it much easier for me to felt. So then you felt, felt, felt. So when you remove your stencil, you have a dot. That goes to show you how you can use a stencil to create a design. It could be a stencil for a leaf or a flower or a duck or a car or anything. And this is almost, I mean, this is as easy as paint by numbers. 
So you can see that your dot is totally felted right in there. It's not going anywhere, it doesn't move. The design does not rub off, but what will happen is as you continually use the soap and you wear down the soap, this little casing, your wool casing, will continue to felt and it will continually shrink with your soap. Once your soap is gone, you're gonna be left with a little scrub pad, which you can use as a facial scrub to use it with your um, facial wash. You can also use it as a little scrub pad for your dishes. Another thing you can do once the soap is gone, you're left with the little pad, is you can add a couple of drops of essential oil and you can just throw these into your drawers just to keep your linens or your clothing scented. So all my designs have just been freehand because I was just playing around with different techniques. So for instance, if you wanted to do something like um, a eucalyptus branch, because this is a eucalyptus soap, you only need the tiniest amounts to make lines. So look at how fine that is. It's like as fine as a little strand of wool. And then I just take my strand, if I'm going to do, if I'm doing a eucalyptus branch, so you just lay out your little line. This will be my eucalyptus branch. The back end of my stick and held the wool down. And then I just started felting, needle felting the end just to anchor my branch. Once it is anchored into the wool like this, you can see it, it's indented. And this is just how I do it. I am not a professional. This is my first time felting, but this is how I found it the easiest. I held it down in the middle and then I just felted here. So I felted at the top here and now I'm going to felt at the bottom and then I just felt it at the so end. You can see I felt it at the top, in the middle and at the end. And I used this for all my designs, just kind of anchored it in specific spots because now I can just freehand the rest of the felting without the design moving. And especially if you're doing stems because the line is so thin. So now you can see it's felted right in there and that's my stem. So to make my little, and this could be whatever, I'm gonna take a little tuft and it really does not take much. So I just take what's going to be my little leaf, my eucalyptus leaf. So I just do a little positioning of where I think things are going to go. This isn't, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out, but this is what I do. So I create my little design and then I hold my first piece in place. So I'm gonna start off with the top and then I just start needling. And there I've got one little leaf attached. So then I'll do the next one. one attached. And I just go along and just attach the leaves in place so that I can then freeform. And you may find a different technique that works for you better, that works better for you. This is just one way that I've decided to do it. This is the side that I've started tacking down. This is the side that it's just laying there. Look, it's just laying there. And you don't even have to do this. You can just be an abstract artist. It's all tacked on, it's not gonna move. So this is when I can come in and really get some um, felting, needle felting done. And you will see how gratifying this is. It's really relaxing and you can get yourself totally 
absorbed in doing this. And you'll know when it's felted because it will be flat. And the more you do this, actually, there's more, the more precise that you get. So then you can start really getting into the felting as an art form and you can create highlights and you can really create some magnificent pieces of art. And fair warning, this can be so, you can totally get lost in doing this and time will just evaporate. Here you go, it's totally felted. You can see it's flat, it's right in that soap. So this is my eucalyptus soap. It could be something as simple as that. You can really see that going in. Right in there and then it will stay put. This is definitely a relaxing craft. I could do this for hours. As a matter of fact, once you really get into this, you kind of lose yourself. You lose track of time. I know because I've missed feeding my dog his lunch because I got so involved in doing this, but I just love it. And the possibilities are endless, not just for soaps, but for all kinds of things. So I'm really looking forward to felting everything. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope that you give me a like. If you make this and you like it, I hope you share it. And if you'd like to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until next time, actually, you might still find me at this table felting because I never felt so great.